Okay, let's talk about conditional expectation. So this is a funny uh, topic in that it's at one level very intuitive and natural to think about. And on the other hand, it can be very confusing, especially if you get caught up in the abstraction. So let's try to ground things a little bit. So say that you've observed that the random variable y is equal to little y, and you want to use this information to predict the random variable x. So that makes sense. So we know that the conditional PMF, P of x given y, or the conditional PDF, f of x given y, tells us the distribution of x once we know y. But what about just the average value of x once we know y? Okay, as an example, let's say what you've done is observe the temperature today, and you try to predict, based on your statistical model, the average temperature tomorrow. Or you take a measurement from a reactor that you know to be noisy, and you try to determine what is the best control input on average, okay? So the conditional expected value, e of x, given that y is equal to this little y, is exactly that um, average given the value of y. So in the discrete case, we just define this to be the sum over x times the conditional PMF of x given y. And in the continuous case, we just replace that sum with an integral. Okay, so on the one hand, it's very straightforward. All we're doing is taking an average except instead of the marginal PMF or PDF, we have the conditional PMF or PDF. So when we were taking expected values like E of X, we knew that we're just getting numbers. So all of the randomness in the random variable X is averaged out. In contrast, when you take a conditional expected value, something like E of X, given y is equal to little y, that is going to be a function of this little y. And so roughly speaking, what's happening is all of the randomness in x that does not depend on y is averaged out, but the rest is left in place. Okay, and sometimes it'll help us to write this conditional expectation as a particular function, h of y, to remind ourselves that the thing that we're getting here is actually going to be a function of this little y and not necessarily just a number, okay? So this notation e of x given y is equal to little y can confuse us. Sometimes it helps to just write h of y. And furthermore, and this is where it starts to get confusing in the abstractions, if I plug the random variable back into this function h of y, we know that what we're getting is a function that it, of a random variable which is, which is itself a random variable, right? So if I have a function and I plug in a random variable, I get another random variable. So in this sense, we can sometimes use this notation E of X given capital Y to represent this H of capital Y, where H of Y, remember, is just the conditional expectation for a given value of Y. And so E of X given capital Y is actually a random variable. And this is where it's easy to get confused if you haven't gotten comfortable with all these definitions. But we're gonna work out some examples a little bit later and that should help out. We can also define the conditional expected value um, of a function, so e of g of x given that y is equal to little y, okay? All of that is going to be the same as um, before, except now what we're doing is averaging the values of this function times the conditional PMF in the discrete case, and in the continuous case, just integrating instead of summing this function times the conditional PDF, okay? And again, writing h of y as this expected value of g of x given y is equal to y helps remind us that the thing that we're supposed to get will be a deterministic function of this little y. And the notation e of g of x given capital Y, again, reminds us that what's happening is we're substituting in this random variable capital Y into this particular function, right? And then what we're getting is a random variable. And again, don't get too caught up on this. So it's just something that we'll become comfortable with as we go along. Uh, try to stick more with the definitions until you get comfortable. Okay, so a couple of properties. So one is that for conditional expectation, let's say you have um, two random variables, X and Y, 
and you know they're independent, then when you take conditional expectations, you just get the expectation. So it doesn't depend on why. All right, and that makes sense because if two random variables are independent, they can't help predict one another. So there shouldn't be anything in the average as well. Formally, what we see here is when you plug in the definition for the conditional expectation, independence changes the conditional PMF into a marginal PMF, and that's just the expected value of x. More important property is this law of total expectation. Okay, and so written in this way, what it says is that if you are interested in getting the average value of a random variable, what you can do is average the conditional expectation. So think that you first compute the conditional expectation given y. That gives you something that depends on y, and y is random, and then you average that. Interestingly, that will give you the value that you're looking for, the expected value of x or the expected value of g of x. And you might be wondering, when is this going to come up? And we're going to see that in an example. But first, let's see why this is true. So if I just open up this formula by remembering I can define this h of y as the conditional expectation, which is just the sum of x times the conditional PMF, then I plug in h of y times the marginal of y. I plug back in the definition of h of y. Then I notice by the multiplication rule, I have a conditional PMF times a marginal PMF. That's just the joint PMF. And then this thing here is the expectation of x. So it's definitely true, but it's easy to get confused by what this expectation means. So we're going to do some examples so we see explicitly what it means. Let's start with a table. So here's a simple joint, a conditional PMF table, not joint PMF. I want to calculate e of x given y is equal to little y. Well, what I know is I just sum up x times the conditional PMF of y given y. And so in this case, I'm going to have two different cases. So there's going to be a case where um, y is equal to 1, all right, and another case where y is equal to 2. Those are the two possible values of y. I'm going to get two different averages for those, okay? So the first one is just from the first row, 1 times 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0. And the second row is a fourth, a fourth and a half for the uh, conditional PMF. And so I just work these out. I'm going to get 1 when y equals 1 and 9 fourths when y equals 2. And that makes sense. If you look at these two rows, when y is equal to 1, x is always equal to 1, so the average should be 1. Whereas when y is equal to 2, it kind of slides a bit more up, and then we get a higher value like 9 fourths. Okay, let's say I want to calculate the expectation of this conditional expectation. Well, first of all, I don't have enough information to do this yet because what I gave you here is just the conditional PMF, and I really need to also know the marginal PMF in this case of y. And I'm just going to give you some particular marginal PMF, okay? So usually the problem would give it to you at the outset. Now I'm just defining it to remind you that you really do need this as well. Okay, so let's write this out using the definition. So I'm taking the expectation of this particular function, which is a conditional expectation, and I'm then going to plug in the values 1, okay, times p of y of 1, plus the expectation at, uh, conditional expectation at 2, times p of y 2, and so that's going to be 1 times a third plus 9 fourths times 2 thirds, that's 2 plus 9 over 6, that's 11 over 6, and that happens to be the expected value of x by the law of total expectation, which is what we saw as a property before. Okay, so this is sometimes more convenient than trying to compute e of x directly. We're going to see um, an example where that's really true right now. Okay, so let's use our hierarchical probability models to come up with that kind of scenario. So let's say that x given y is equal to y is geometric y. So y is a parameter for this geometric and let's say the marginal PMF of y is a fourth when y is equal to one half, and then three fourths for y is equal to two thirds. Okay, we can also write the conditional PMF of x given y. All right, so this is just y times one minus y to the x minus one. 
that's just whenever y sits in its range and x sits in its range. So this is the full description of these random variables. And working out the uh, conditional expectation and the uh, expectation of x would be kind of annoying if we just tried to do it from scratch. But instead, what we're going to use is the things we know about the family of random variables. So since x given y is geometric, we know that the mean of a geometric is 1 over p for parameter p. So here, p is actually y. So I can just write 1 over y. Now let's say I want e of x. I'm going to use the law of total expectation to write it as the expectation of the conditional expectation, which I just worked out. So this is going to be plugging in this 1 over y, which we just obtained, and taking the expectation with respect to y. So I have 1 over y, which I just got on the left, times p of y. So that's going to be 1 over 1 half times a fourth plus 1 over 2 thirds times 3 fourths. Okay, so the 1 fourths and 3 fourths are the probabilities for y, and the 1 over 1 half, that's the value of y, and the 1 over 2 thirds, that's the value of y. So overall, this is a half times 9 eighths, which is 13 eighths. That's a lot more convenient than working it out from scratch. Let's do a continuous case as well. All right, so y, x given y is Gaussian with mean y squared over 3 and variance 4, and y, let's say, is exponential 2. So I have these two different families. And what I want to do is figure out the conditional expectation of x given y, as well as the expectation of just x alone. Okay, so first of all, I know that the conditional expectation is just going to be y squared over 3, and that's because for a Gaussian mu sigma squared random variable, the mean is just mu, and in this case, mu is y squared over 3. The expectation I'll get using the law of total expectation, so I take the expectation of what I just obtained, so that's going to work out to be the expectation of y squared over 3. And what is y squared over 3? Well, e of y squared, I can get using this alternate variance formula, which we've used before. So remember that that formula tells me that the variance of y is just e of y squared minus the square of e of y. And so I can solve for e of y squared. So it's the variance of y plus the square of the expectation of y. And now I know that for an exponential lambda random variable, I know that the mean is always 1 over lambda and the variance is 1 over lambda squared. So I can just plug those in. I get a half squared plus 1 half, again, squared. So I'm going to get 1 half. So this is just going to be a third times 1 half, which is 1 sixth. And again, that's a lot more convenient than trying to open up the double integrals and work them out, which would be quite tedious. OK, let's do a visual example just to wrap things up. So. I'm going to give you a joint PDF. In this case, it's going to be constant over this particular range, which we're going to see is a triangle. So x is between 0 and y, y is between 0 and 1. It really helps to draw it. So here's this y equals x line. Okay, And here is where y is equal to 1. And this is where it's allowed to live. OK. So what I want to do is, just like before, work out the conditional expectation and the expectation. All right. And so the first step is I'm going to figure out what is the conditional PDF, because I've been given the joint PDF. I need the conditional PDF. So the first thing I need to do is work out the uh, marginal PDF f of y. OK. So to do that, I'm going to just integrate out the variable that I don't want, which in this case is x. So I integrate the joint PDF with respect to x. And so that is going to be just integrating from 0 to this line y, 2 times d of x. So that's 2x from 0 to y. So that's just going to be 2y whenever y is between 0 and 1. That's the range of y. OK, now I'm going to plug in to the conditional PDF formula. And if I recall, 
the conditional PDF formula in this case is just going to be um, the joint PDF divided by um, the marginal PDF, and that's going to be true whenever x, y is in the range of um, x, y, and otherwise 0. So I'm going to get 2 over 2y, and I'm just writing down the range, and 0 otherwise. Okay, so finally, I'm now going to go and plug into this conditional expectation formula. Okay, so that's going to be my second step. All right, and what I'm going to get here is just the expectation of x given y. So I'm going to integrate x with respect to the conditional PDF that I just obtained. And so I'm going to have this integration limit again from 0 to y, x times 1 over y. That's going to be a half x squared from 0 to y times 1 over y. And that's going to be y over 2. So notice that this integral had a 1 over y sitting in it. And I didn't do anything with that because it doesn't depend on x, and I was only integrating out x. Notice that this line, this y over 2 line, is exactly halfway between the two limits of this triangle, and that makes sense. The average value is between, halfway between 0 and y, okay? So that's exactly what this conditional PDF shows us or sorry, conditional expectation shows us that I get exactly halfway, and it depends on y. Finally, to get e of x, let's just go ahead and use the law of total expectation. We could have gotten the marginal of x, but we already have the conditional expectation. We might as well use it. So here I'm using law of total expectation. That tells me I need to figure out the expectation of y over 2. So that means just take the integral of y over 2 times the marginal PDF of y. So that just means integrate from 0 to 1 y squared dy, that's a third y cubed from 0 to 1, and that's going to be 1 third. Okay, so um, this conditional expectation idea is going to be really important for us when we look at the applications of estimation and inference. So trying to say something about variables that you have not observed from variables that you have observed. And so understanding the mechanics of how conditional expectation works is going to be really important for working out those applications later.